stretch. <clears throat> Yeah. See, but you know these two will stay close now, right? You won't hold those, dude. All you gotta do is just do. Dude, you need to cut your nails. Yeah, you have nails. I know I was gonna burn it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I like, I like the control that you guys did. Um, it was good control, but at the same time, you guys kept it intense. So that's why I'm looking for intensity with control. Um, yeah, I liked it when I sparked with Natali because it was like, it was still like really intense, but nothing was really too hard, you know, or like, it was really good. Yeah. So, George and Natali are both getting a lot better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. The, brown, the brown stuff is like messing up my head. <laughs> I gotta work on that. I'm not used to someone trying to throw me. Yeah, you gotta get used to it. You gotta get that. You. <laughs> she could probably fall in trouble. Can we try where I throw guys? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> can I try and grab mine and then go? <laughs> I think the girls did really good today too, man. Yeah, the girls did well. And it just gives them some um, to work on and improve upon, and um, give them that confidence to to fight back. You guys gotta get used to um, getting used to striking them and hitting them without them doing the same to you right now. And if you could do that more consistently, then we'll have them fight back a little more. Progressively, you get get you guys more used to sparring. Right now, one of your main goals is not letting them get to you to the ground. I was doing fine until Jordy got me on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but you're distracted, and then he got you. I, mean, I know. I was laughing at how he was trying to <laughs> grab me, and I think that he just got me. George Keith got better. Yeah. The private lessons, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the yeah. private yeah. lessons work. <laughs> you kick the hydro yeah. yeah. Get like headshots in. Yeah, let's do them, man. No, oh, well, I'm going to leave. I'm going to get him to stay. You tell you, Oh. That's just between me and him. Uh. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys are not supposed to know what that means. I do know what that means. Oh, See if I'm gonna wear the sock a few minutes, if she don't come, I'm gonna leave. Okay. Well, you have to work on that limb and get to, your, to the ground like that. Yeah. And if you do, you gotta get, either get back up as quick as possible or be in control. Like, if they get you to the ground, you got a good headlock on them. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. But you gotta have control of them and you, or you have to get right back up as soon as possible. Yeah, I think yeah, just practicing more, getting used to it. Because this took me by surprise, you know. But I think uh, the thing I, I noticed I did better today with was my kicks. Like usually I just throw them out real slow or like they're not really, they don't do much. But today it was a little bit better. Yeah, there's a couple of them where you, um, you almost got them in the head or in the face, or at least you aimed for it and you got close to it. Yeah. <coughs> That's pretty good. I like how when. Like he and George got to the infighting and how like I grabbed his head like he was still trying to take me down. That's a pretty good defense. Yeah. I mean it's something because when you're when you're down there like you can't just give up, you know. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I want you guys to simulate for each other like an aggressor that doesn't stop. Yeah. So then the defender has to fight through it. I think too, like, it's good to know an opponent that doesn't ground fighting like that because a lot of these people out there, that's what they want to learn, you know, all this media stuff, you know? Yeah. So they're, they're, 
a lot of these people's expertise is going to be trying to take it to the ground. So yeah. You have to be aware of that. Yeah. They even teach that in the military too. Yeah. But I mean, they expend a lot of energy while they try to get you down there. Mm -hmm. And plus, if you were allowed to hit full force, then most of the time they wouldn't even be able to catch you there. Because there's times where you could like beat them in the face, but that's some big hard, hard hooks in it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you want to catch it down. But you hold back the knees, you hold back the hooks, of course they're going to catch you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is, even though you hold back the knees and the hooks, and if they still can't get you to the ground, then that's really good. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they still can't even get you there, or if they do, even if they do get close, there's still a control, then everything's good. Mm -hmm. I like that when you and like, Natalia were like, doing the thing, like how it kind of kept switching around, and yeah. you can kind of see how it, it kind of plays out. Yeah, no, it's just with control too, and I, what, I thought, what I thought was cool is that <coughs> I think it gave him a feeling of how a real fight is, and then, he didn't have to get hurt. Yeah. Like he was exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much how the real fight's gonna be, but there's no yeah. blood, no no like injuries, you know? It's a good basically it's a good simulation, you know. So you back to start hurting today or last night? Like, I was fine, and then I did it my last training, and I stayed around to like rearrange some stuff, and then all of a sudden it started hurting. And then. I tried, yeah, I tried to get the lower back, right? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how it happened to me, too. I don't know if it's like too much stretch in the back, or if that helps it, or if it hurts it. I, I, was, think, I was thinking maybe I just over exhausted myself. Yeah. And it's just. It feels like just, it just feels like, like sore. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, I just over exhausted myself. I didn't really eat much food. And then, <coughs> I just got overworked, I think. It happens to me sometimes too. And then, like, if I try to, like, stretch my back too much, it might irritate it. Yeah. But then I notice if I don't stretch my back, it's more irritable too, like to, to keep hurting. Yeah. So I don't know if it's got to just keep stretching it. Kind of but then I was thinking, I don't know if it was like all those kip ups that didn't roll because I know they don't do that many, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like that because I try to pay attention to the stuff that I don't do that often. Because I know that's for a fact, like when I did gymnastics one time, I, I wasn't used to that stuff. And then my whole body was like sore as hell. Because your body's not used to like pounding against the mat like that. Yeah. But then another thing is I think also <coughs> is if you tire out the legs a lot and your butt muscles, it like leads up to the lower back. I see. Yeah. Because that's what my doctor said too when I when I hurt my like back and stuff. It's like I was kicking too high or something. Yeah. So it could be like the strain, the too strenuous on your legs or. Because I was like putting the woodlock back there and then I was like. Like going around, you know, just like massaging on my butt area too, and I could feel like if that gets tired, then the lower back would trigger, you know? I feel like in order to get to the split, I'm gonna have to like stay 48 hours <laughs> <laughs> and just keep pushing. <laughs> So I heard you guys like that movie yesterday. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> what was it about? It was about like zombies, the world like ending. <laughs> the zombies is very like contemplative. He just doesn't like being a zombie. But he has no choice. <clears throat> he 
he meets a girl and he falls in love with her and he starts becoming human again. Mm. So it's really good. It's a nice movie. <laughs> My sister um, recommended a movie called Contagion. I haven't seen that. And then we saw it online. It was okay. Like how one virus spreads another. Like, it's okay. Like yeah. You don't like any movies. <laughs> <laughs> he likes Bruce Lee movies. No, those are okay too. I mean, they're not all like. I mean, those are the seventies. Those movies. are just Bruce like. That, they were cheesy looking. Yeah. Back. I, mean, I think if a Bruce Lee movie was done today, it'd be awesome. No, but it's just no, too much special too effects much that much. makes it like. Not real. Cheesy. Yeah. I mean, something like Matrix, for example, would be better than the Bruce Lee movie. I give Keanu Reeves props, man. Those kicks he did. <clears throat> they were really good, like how we held his leg up there and everything. Yeah. Yeah, but it could have been, it could have been a string. I you heard think that, so? I heard that like they had like a wire. They might have had a wire there and then like moved the wire. <laughs> oh, I was, say, I was like, man, you know, another martial artist thing really beating me. Crazy. But it wasn't the thing that doesn't draw me. It's not the fighting. It's just more like the story, the story and what he's trying to teach you. But Fearless is like a great movie to me. It's like the the transition between like all this ego and fight, like trying to just it wasn't really martial arts he was doing. He was just you know he just wanted to fight, and then he became yeah. <clears throat> There's another movie that Roberto let us borrow called Assassins, and um, it's like one of those ancient Chinese movies, you know. Mm -hmm. What I liked about it was like the culture. It was like teaching you like what happened in the past, kind of. <coughs> and that kind of got me interested in um, in, like looking up documentaries on ancient China and stuff. So I was like watching it on that too. to like live in ancient China and you can just like work out all day and do martial arts and that was a good job, you know? I'm like, oh, it's crazy how like, good they must have been, you know? No, it wasn't like that. According to the movies, it's like, it's like being a slave though. Like when you're probably a master disciple type thing? No, it's like, it's talking about like when there's the emperor times. Oh yeah. It's like they're, they like work you like a slave. They're talking about like how they're like building the Great Wall of China, and they had like a mil they like forced like a million Chinese people to work on it, mm -hmm. and maybe like a quarter of a million of them just died while like, while, while building it. That sucks. And like, you know how they talk about slavery here with like, you know, with the <coughs> like over there, it's like your own people are enslaving you. Like the emperor will, they'll just kill you. Like one of they feel like it, they'll just be like. They have like rules like to say like if you fornicate then you'll get beheaded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they'll be like like then there was like this documentary that's saying like this emperor had like two thousand six hundred concubines and one of the concubines was caught like messing around with a eunuch and then he just executed all of the concubines. How does that work? Or like, just they're like just like doing like I don't know, they're like just <laughs> So he just like ordered like all the concubines to get executed. You know what I'm saying? It's just like crazy. Like that. It's like they don't they, they can't even practice martial arts because they're busy doing things with what the emperor wants them to do. Like there's this thing called like the Forbidden City. It took like ten years to build and they had to get like materials from like thousands of miles away or whatever, or hundreds of miles away. So they have like people like lug like wood for like and like stone for like hundreds of miles walking in <laughs> from one location to like to build up that palace. So like you're just like living for the emperor pretty much. Like you can't even have your own life.
and I think what, what I think what ends up ha what ended up happening is um, the whole Shaolin martial arts was developed to fight the emperor's like soldiers. Mm -hmm. So like that's where the spirit is concerned. Like with the with Buddhist teaching and the Shaolin, you know, those are like um, opposing the emperor and the soldiers. You know, so like the soldiers would come in and try to like take out the whole whatever temple and then they'd have to fight back and that's where the martial arts came from. But with the stuff that the emperor did with the soldiers, that's just like straight like like tyranny and like brutal military like execution type things, you know what I'm saying? And it was like talking about like how one of the emperors um was selected based on like family lineage and um like the son of the emperor got pissed off because he didn't think that, the, that, that whoever was selected was qualified. So that he was over, gonna overtake that emperor by like killing him, you know. And then that emperor had to um, run, you know, run away. He had to sh he shaved, he shaved his head and like pretty much disguised as a monk, and he ran away. And then that other guy just killed up his family. God, and so that all right. So you went tomorrow? Yeah. Alright. And took over the whole thing. So pretty much, that guy had to go and hide it. Because <coughs> like over here, it might be like a racial war, you know? Mm -hmm. But over there, it's not even racial, it's just like a person in power just takes it like destroys everybody's livelihood. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people talk about that, how like, you know, kind of like what's worse, you know. At least in the ancient history, people were took you or came, you came a thing just because they were stronger than you or had more power or more whatever. Here, they made it about race or what you look like or, you know. They made it a a thing about how you look, whatever. So like you can never escape that, you know? But it's just crazy. I mean, even now, man, I mean it's not as extreme and people are I guess more free, but I mean there's different slavery in different ways, you know, like we're not building the forbidden kingdom but we're or forbidden city, but we have to work every day forty hours for what, you know? To help some corporation fulfill their mission. No, but when I see those documentaries and I see like how how horrible their lives were, now I understand like why they put up with so much stuff over here. Yeah. It's like nothing to them. You know what I'm saying? Like over here, it's like it's like they're basically over there back the, back in the day. They're they're forced to work to live like. If they don't work, they'll just execute them. <clears throat> like, just like nothing. So, like, they're working like 16, 20 hour days just so they could live. And here, people amass <coughs> wells and they naturally build a life for themselves. Like, here, you know, they just, like, minimum wage is not, they're not satisfied with it. <clears throat> but say you bring somebody from over there, they're like, hey, you know, <coughs> they don't get anything. And then over here, minimum wage or even five dollars or whatever dollars, like a lot to them. Right. And they, they put up with a lot. It's just nothing to them compared to how it was back then. And I start to understand like why like my parents were the way they were and like how like how a lot of Chinese they don't look people in the eyes and stuff. Because you look at the emperor thing. <clears throat> the emperor would be there, like, all up in the throne, and they would have to, like, bow down the whole time. Like, they can't even look up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if the emperor wanted somebody killed, just go like this. Like, he'd have, he'd be sick, and he'd be like, alright, find me a doctor. And he'd be like, oh, this doctor's gonna cure this, have him beheaded. That's how crazy it was, man. It's just, like, nuts, man. Was there ever an empire? I mean, it kind of sucks. Say that they're all tearing, like, tearing. 
Was there ever any good, like, emperor, you mean? Dynasties, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, like, from everything that I've heard, it's like all that messed up. Like, do have, like, one emperor <clears throat> has, like, 3,000 concubines, and then he'll just let all the, the, the people not even have. He wouldn't even let them be with anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like over here, they have like laws where you can only marry like one woman, right? Like that's kind of like benefiting the people because then you say 3,000 men that you should get their own woman. But back then, it'd be like, all right, I get the 3,000 women, you 2,999 men, you get nothing. It's like that. You know what I'm saying? And like they're eating like gourmet, like Chinese food, like all like extravagant food, extravagant clothing. And then all the people are just like eating like dirt so like for example we think it might be bad here that the rich the gap between the rich and the poor for example but it's like even poor people got cell phones they got cars they got unlimited food from like the link and stuff you know what i'm saying they got apartments to live in but over there it's like he has this huge kingdom and everybody's like living on huts and then like he just tell he'll just execute whoever he wants and whenever he wants, like no problem. It's like crazy. When you see all that, you're like, man. Like you know how like the blacks complain complain about slavery and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. It'd be like that's nothing compared to what they went through over there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the difference is it's not by different skin color, it's by your own skin color. Mm -hmm. It's just that the person is like, you know, basically just destroying the whole Civilization, like single-handedly. <clears throat> so and then you know it makes sense, like why the Chinese, they're like they're so like a lot of times they're not emotional and they're not like even in movies today they're not emotional. They don't really show love. They don't hug. They don't kiss. None of that. You know what I'm saying? Because back then, if you do it, you'd be like executed. You know what I'm saying? Like. Straight up like fornication, you'd get beheaded. I was like, holy shit, you know what I'm saying? Like that's why they, they don't show love, you know what I'm saying? Because if you hug somebody, then you get accused of like fornicating or something like that. And then um, it makes sense, man. And then it's like in you, like you're born to be that way. So then it's like you can't really get mad, like my sister did. Oh, you know my parents don't tell me blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but it's like, you know, like, it's like you're born to be that way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, cause it is like passed down through like your genes to be like more unemotional. <clears throat> and that's why it's like kind of in the blood of the Chinese to have kung fu, because it's like they're so used to like working for free or working for nothing, or they're so used to being slaves that it's just like nothing to them. That they don't even need money to work hard. That's pretty much how it goes. Even to this day, they work their asses off. They barely get anything. They're like making all our products for us to use, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're so used to working for free that it's already in them to work hard. It's just that their Kung Fu has just transformed into like more practical things. Like instead of like practicing combat techniques all day, they might make like cell phones all day, or like cook food all day, or like make shoes all day so that people would buy them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what's happening is kind of like the people in power in China right now, they're enslaving their own people and then they're allowing like America and all these other countries to enslave them as well. So then they got like a whole mass of people that are enslaved for like the benefit of the people that are well off. Mm -hmm. Cause here we're like, hey, you know, as long as we can buy these gadgets for cheaper, that's all I care about. But then there's people out there over there that are like slave working for that and they get like nothing. I mean, China is, China is definitely getting a little bit better though, like I, I know there's parts of China where people are actually doing pretty good for themselves, but there's those areas too that people like work in factories for 12 hours a day, they don't make anything. Yeah man, like I've seen the, like documentaries where 
they're working like 16 hour days and they sleep at work and then they're like in these working conditions that are like really unsafe and un like very hazardous and they're making like teddy bears and shit like that and it's like they're living in prison pretty much that's pretty much what, it's, what it is <clears throat> it's just crazy man like all that manpower that was required to build the Great Wall and how hard they had to work and then what why did like they'd be like the only the motivation from the work is like if you don't work I'm just gonna kill you. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. It's just like crazy, man. Yeah. It's like if you don't work I'm just gonna kill you. Over here it's like alright, um, we'll give you this much money to work and you're like, uh if you give me more then I'll do it. And then they give you more money than you do it. But over there, they're like, alright, you're not getting the raise. But matter of fact, you're not getting anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> you're just gonna live if you work. <laughs> That's like crazy, man. Like, like China's pretty smart just because what they're doing is they're they're making everything in the world. In, in essence, if we stop making it, if we just say if we're done, we won't work anymore, or government puts a embargo on their labor. I mean, the world shuts down. All the products that the world uses, a lot of them are made in China, clothes or whatever, you know? The world needs China. And it's to the point where, like, it's going to become eventually, like, China's going to be, like, America, like, the superpower of the world where, you know, they have control and they have, like, in essence, like, an authority. And people are going to want to learn Chinese and everything, you know, like, like how the world wants to learn English now. Yeah. I can see it becoming be Chinese or, or whatever, just because Americans don't make anything anymore. Everything is outsourced. Because there's no way you can compete with that, man. No. They got so many. Say they got like 300 million or 500 million slaves. And then for here, we got no slaves. Mm -hmm. Like we can't, you're not allowed to make people work for free here. But over there, they got 500 million slaves. How could you? compete with that. You can't. Because <laughs> it's like, you make a product here, it might cost you a hundred bucks. You make it over there, it costs you 50 cents. There's, these corporations are like, there's no way I'm going to make the product here. You know, I'll just go out of business if I make the products here. So they outsource all everything over there. But it's just sad that I mean, there's the, the slaves, the slavery is going on over there pretty much. You know what I'm saying? And, but a lot, of, a lot of people can argue like it's it's part of like a economic development like America when the industrial revolution happened same thing happened here kids were working people worked in factories immigrants worked here and like just kind of did the same thing you know but then it reached a point where you know the United States didn't need to do that anymore they, they had other places to go it might be the same for China like eventually they'll develop to a point where they don't need but, but what's annoying over here is that there's a lot of people that want jobs, but then there's like no jobs available. Yeah. So then it's like, then what do you expect people to do to pay the bills? You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense. It's like, everybody should be able to work to make some money if they want to. Mm -hmm. But you're not even giving them the opportunity because there's nothing left available because everything is over there. And it's not just like the unskilled jobs, it's also the, the skilled jobs. Like people from you know, China, Europe, even like Latin America, you know? Yeah. They they study, they, they know what it is to like not have a lot. So they study hard and they, they push themselves. Americans, not to say they're lazy, <laughs> but they, they, they don't really see the They don't need to, they don't see the need to have to like try that not hard to, in school, not you know? to say they're lazy. We're, we're a C plus, <laughs> we're a C plus, a C, C, D nation average. You know, so people come over here for a new life, they blow our students out the way, you know, so those jobs are going to people from other countries, you know, who, who have worked harder and, you know, are going to be of value. And then once they, a lot of people here, when, when they um, when they do that, they get a good job, and they, then they eventually just go back home, you know. So it's like, it's a cycle, man. We, they, built, they built the system to be that way now. What it, what it seems like though, it seems like in America it's like 
it's like they don't want to do none of the physical. They, they outsource all the physical work to other countries. No. But then they like, they just want to sit around and read books all day and go to schools all day and make themselves feel like they're a, a superior kind of. Right. Because their language is more complicated and more developed. So it's basically like they just study all day or just read books all day or just. I don't know, it's just weird, how, it's weird to explain it, but it's just, but it's not doing anything. You know, it's like, they're just like, it's like they go to, you know, they, they, they just study books and texts all day, but they don't really actually live life, no. you know, like, and then, yeah. Like Europe and stuff, like, they don't have a lot of money, but they enjoy, like if you go to Italy or something, they, you know, they, they have like afternoon breaks and like, People don't have a lot, but they enjoy life, you know. Here, people are always living to work, working to live, you know, like, hustling, and, you like know, it, working, like, most of your life is work here, you know. And, and not, like, the same as China, because I know it's not the same thing, but it's like, people don't really enjoy, they, they enjoy life two days out of the week, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, basically... What I, what I think would be nice is like full time shouldn't be considered 40 hours a week, but it should be considered 20 hours a week. And then it just, then it will double the jobs and more people will be able to work. And then you have more time to enjoy life. That's what I think. Because 40 hours a week with commute and all that stuff, it's just like too much. You don't even have much time left for anything else. You know, but. How does this whole push for like internet company and startup and what you're doing is you're just turning yourself into a machine, you're on a computer all day, you're staring at a screen. That's not good for your eyes, that's not good for your body. How do you eat? You eat junk food, you know? I don't know, man, it's like, it's just weird. Like you just, I just kind of learned this recently. Like, like we're so beyond the the basics of what we need, like food and shelter, that like, in order to profit, you had to focus on luxuries. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, like I thought, like, oh, you know, Jenny's restaurant's gonna make a lot of money because it's food, it's people, something that people need. But we're not making anything, and then the shoe store next door is making everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they get like the fancy kicks or whatever, and it's like Americans are like. They're so beyond just like the, the basics that like in order to really make money, you gotta do something where promoting something that they really don't need. No matter be like cell phones, cable, internet. Um, the Americans always want more, better, nicer, faster, sleeker. But uh, to what end? I mean, you know, this way to see it, you know, like fashion's always changing to what end? I mean, we're just recycling the same styles or, you know, cell phones, how much more advanced can they really be, you know? We're always changing, 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 but when is it enough? When are we done with our progression of... But, you know, I heard that they have all the technology there, but they're, like, slowly, just little by little building upon so then they keep profiting. Like, they don't want to just show you, like, the ultimate phone. Like, they... For example, like they might have a, f they were they might already have a phone that's developed that could like go like maybe like let's say some some crazy like um make your car fly or something like that. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to show you that right now. They're just gonna show you like little, just like a little improvement year by year, so they keep profiting until mm -hmm. like it gets to the point where it's like like say for example like these little flash drives. They might have a flash drive that's already developed that has like, like one million gigabytes, but they're not gonna put that in the market now. They're just gonna build it up from fifty gigabytes. Oh, next year sixty gigabytes, and just keep getting you buy it until it gets to hundred million. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, so, so that's how they profit. You know, like somebody told me that about like the Apple thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are like so excited about like the iPhone or whatever. But it was just like a minor improvement. <coughs> but then they're just gonna make minor improvements every single year 
so then they keep making those sales every single year. Mm -hmm. But they already had the technology that will that will be like go that would blow your mind away, you know. The, but they don't want to let it out yet. It's almost like an artist that has like, um, say he has a he he made like um, four thousand albums, and he just comes out with an album every year. So then the people just keep buying it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's not gonna slut it all out there at once. Like I know that they have a lot more technologies that we just don't know about. That's, I know that's for a fact, they do, they just don't tell people. I just feel like, you know, technology makes life easier, but it also makes humans weaker. I mean, like, we become so dependent on these machines that we don't, like, like television. Like, I watch TV all the time, but I'm thinking, like, at the same time, it's like, you're kind of being passive. You know, you're, you're staying home, you're not going anywhere, you're watching what they want you to watch. And that's it, you know, you're you're happy with, you know, staying home. And like we're becoming a society where people just want to stay home. Everything is at your at your at a click away, a phone call away. You don't need to leave your home. You don't need to yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. You know. You don't even need to cook for yourself. Yeah. It's gonna get to a point where you have to lift the damn finger. Yeah. You know? People are gonna become weak. How we're gonna do this gonna have big heads. And that's that's what's happening, like they're doing all the work, and then we're just being like, like we don't, like we're being dependent on them. And like you said, if they decide to stop doing the work, then we're in big trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what's happening. Like they're, they're making us dependent on them. Yeah. But the the, the interesting thing about the way the world is is we're so intermingled with our economies that. It's to a point where everyone's screwed. You know, like if one country gets screwed over, like when America's economy is bad, Europe's economy is bad. You know, it's just crazy, man. Right?